The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! And hello and welcome into Views from the Sidelines. That's Malik Hill. I'm Joey Tysick. And if you couldn't tell, Malik can see clearly now. It's been three straight years. His vision is cleared. <laughs> That's what we'll go with. Yeah. Michigan won. Um, I have 2020 vision. Michigan with a big win. Malik will talk about that. Um, we're going to skip the NBA because there's a franchise that we're just forgetting about. Um, we'll talk about the Lions Thanksgiving and a little bit of that. We'll talk a little bit about college basketball since we missed out last week, um, not being able to preview a bunch of games that happened and there's been a lot of stuff going on over Thanksgiving and all that. And, uh, we're going to get right into it. So Malik, big topic, obviously Michigan does it again, beating Ohio state three straight years. How do you feel? It's it's hard to describe. I remember a few years ago, I can't remember if it was, it might have been after the last time they lost to Ohio State in 2019. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it was during the COVID season in 2020. I'm not sure which one it was. But I was saying like how, like, I never experienced something like the 90s where they well, they would beat Ohio State pretty much every other year and upset them mm-hmm. and ruin their season. Mm-hmm. Or like any real high level seasons being a Michigan fan, I had never experienced it in Michigan football. But I I felt like eventually things would turn again. I it's it's really crazy to see that it turned this fast. Now <clears throat> through the whole scandal and the sign stealing and the going to different games stuff. I made my opinions known on that. I don't think it matters much. Mm -hmm. There's so much more that goes into the game. It's, it's, it's it's just incredible. I, they've beaten them in different ways each time. Yeah. This one, Jim Harbaugh wasn't on the sideline. There was no help from Connor stallions. No sign stealing. Michigan just beat them. Mm-hmm. They just they just flat out beat them. Yeah. And it was a matchup of two even teams for the most part. Mm-hmm. And Michigan just did just enough to get it done in the end. Yeah. I think this game, too, really showed the difference, though. I think the big difference, at least for Ohio State, was how much like their quarterbacks have mattered the last few years. Yeah. Even though Michigan still won the last couple of years, like it just felt closer and you just didn't feel like Kyle McCord could get it done. There was always a moment in a game against of where it was Ohio State and Michigan where you knew Ohio State was about to take over. Yeah. And it hasn't happened in the past three years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even though Ohio State put up a fight, they, you know, they had a chance at one point. But um Michigan just made the right plays at the right time. And now we go into a Big Ten championship where they're going to play Iowa. People are talking about they should play their backups. Listen, on most betting sites, there's a prop that says I, <laughs> Iowa over or under .5 points in the first half. Jeez. Which one are you taking, under or over <laughs> I first half I, points? I think I would take the over just for, you know, statistically, <laughs> but I could see it being under. It's going to be a struggle for Iowa yeah. to get points on the board. Mm-hmm. I could just figure them, you know, maybe they get one big play, kick a field goal or something. That's It's going to have to be some type of trick play, something <laughs> that Michigan just does not see coming. Yeah. And and that's the thing that we always talk about, too. Like, when you're that under, like, matched, that's like what I've said about Michigan State in the past. Like, to beat Michigan, you have to just do something crazy. Um, Iowa, I don't know if they have the weapons to, to even do something crazy, but 
um, they're going to have to try to do something, like change their whole game plan. Their their receiver with the most receptions is Eric Hall, <laughs> and he hasn't played since week four. Yeah. 22 receptions. Leading receiver. Mm-hmm. Hasn't played since week four. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And uh, the a guy I appreciate for the memes, for the most part, the big quarterback, Deacon Hill, mm-hmm. 6'3", almost 260. Yeah. Yeah, given shades of Jared Lorenzen from back in the day, the hefty lefty. Mm-hmm. Uh, Deacon Hill isn't that good. No. <laughs> so it, I, I don't know, man. Mm-hmm. I, it, I think the team Michigan played two years ago. That version of Iowa is better than this version of Iowa. Yeah. So I, it'll take a whole lot of miraculous turnovers and stuff mm-hmm. for Iowa to hang in that game. Yeah. It's a type of game where you hope that you Michigan can get the starters out at halftime, realistically. Um, so we don't like to do it, but we're going to. We're going to look ahead at the college football playoff. Michigan is now their number two, right? Yeah. And Ohio State fell to six. Is that what I saw? Because mm-hmm. I, I behind Texas. I'll be honest. I haven't kept up with the rankings all too much in the last week. But um, where are you at? as far as confidence level for the playoff? Because the confidence level for Ohio State has changed in the last year. You know, going into it, you're a lot more confident than you were. How do you feel now for the college football playoff, though? Because right now they're slated to take on Washington, correct? I would say this this is the best chance they're probably ever going to get. In terms of things being seen, being more balanced than they've been in years, Mm Mm-hmm. This Georgia team isn't better than last year's Georgia team, which wasn't as good as the the team that Georgia, I mean, that Michigan got destroyed by Mm -hmm. two years ago. This Georgia team is really good, but they're not a juggernaut. Washington has shown a ton of flaws in the past six weeks. Michael Penix isn't fully healthy. I think Oregon is overall better than them. Yeah, that's what I think. And they could beat them this weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Florida State, unfortunately, Jordan Travis went down. Yeah. He was having a great season, leading them to the playoff. Tore his Achilles in the final game of the season. Well, second to last game of the season against North Alabama of all teams. Yeah. Just really tough to see. Florida State could still win the ACC championship and get to the playoff. Mm -hmm. But anything past that with their backup is going to be really tough. And, yeah, at five is Oregon. And they're the team that I believe is the second best team in the country. Yeah. Ahead of Michigan. They Mm -hmm. scare me. Yeah, Bo Nix will probably win the Heisman. I think they're going to beat Washington this weekend. They've got a high-level run game. They've got the receivers. They play tough. They're the team when they step into the Big Ten next year. I'm going to be afraid of them more than Ohio State. Yeah, because Dan Lanning already has the athletes and the play style to step into the Big Ten right now and compete for championships. Mm-hmm. So Oregon is the team I'm afraid of, and. You'll you'll have to play them eventually, right? If you get to the whether it's the first round or the or the championship, if you get there, you'll probably have to play them. But Georgia, like I said, they're not a slouch either. They're really good. Mm-hmm. They're just not the dominant team you remember. They don't have like six or seven draft picks on the defensive side. They have some good players, a good overall defense, right? Like Carson Beck has been a big reason why they've been so good this year. Uh, he's done a good job replacing Stetson Bennett. But their offense isn't like incredible. Like they almost lost to Auburn early in the season. Mm-hmm. They played other teams close. It's it's really interesting. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Michigan has a chance. Mm-hmm. We just have to see them do it. Like they they finally shown they could beat Ohio State multiple years. Now the stigma is, can they win in the playoffs? Once again, with the scandal, people were saying they weren't able to scout TCU, so they got smacked by TCU. Whatever. Mm-hmm. This is the year for them to prove it. Yeah. This is why all those seniors came back. This is why they're here. Yeah. And especially the thing you don't even fully think about is like next year, their schedule is going to be harder with all the teams that are coming in. There's college football expansion for the playoff. Like, this is the last year of college football that is somewhat normal to pe- to people. Yeah. So things are going to change quickly. <clears throat> and we don't know how it's going to be when those other teams get added in. Like we said, it's going to make it the, the schedule just a lot tougher in general um, to make it out. They're also 
what was the other thing? Oh, like they're getting rid of like they're not gonna have the divisions. Yeah. So like that's gonna be a big deal. Like you're just gonna have a outright Big Ten champion and stuff, and it's just gonna be interesting to see how it all plays out. So like you said, it's it's a good opportunity for them, especially if I would think if. Oregon was to win, they would probably, I don't know, they would probably move up to three, don't you think? they take Washington's They spot. would probably just yeah. swap. Well, also, Georgia has to beat Alabama. Yeah. Because Michigan could move up to one, mm-hmm. Oregon could go to two. Like, it's, yeah. there are different options of things that could happen. Yeah. So, I would say, for, for your sake, which is weird for me to say, too, that you'd probably have to root for Alabama this weekend, and so yeah. that you get to the number one slot. Hoping that Florida State still wins the ACC, so then you get a first round matchup against Florida State, which you can't ever say cakewalk, but that's like the closest thing you could get to a cakewalk yeah. for a football playoff. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of crazy scenarios that could Listen, happen. As long as there there shouldn't be any scenario where Ohio State sneaks in, <laughs> there does not need to be one of those weird things this year. Yeah, that's just yeah. I'm hoping Florida State just handles business. I'm really hoping they do. That would, yeah, that would have to be. Well, don't you think that if Alabama won, they would. Well, if Alabama won, they would jump ahead of Ohio State. Right. They would. So I would think. Yeah, I would think. Texas is in the Big 12 championship, too. Yeah. And they're right behind Ohio State. So Mm -hmm. there there are so many variables that would keep Ohio State out of it. Yeah, I don't think Ohio State. Yeah, Texas Texas can win. Alabama, it's, it's a whole lot. Right. So. Things are looking good for for you right now, and you get maybe a week off before you have to start thinking about all the actual scenarios that played out. Yeah. Um, let's move over to college basketball then, and just give a quick update about the teams, because <laughs> over Thanksgiving they both faltered. Things have been very interesting to start, to yeah. say the least. Yeah. Uh, Michigan State got beat by Arizona, kind of like we thought they would. I thought they just, hung in a little bit better than I thought at times. It was It's hard to explain how they hang around. Mm-hmm. Because would you agree with me that their offense is clearly just flat out not good? Yeah, it's bad. And somehow they still just manage to stay in games. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they, they are still having a big man issue. Uh, yes. Like I've talked about in length, Maddie Sissoko is just not good. Carson uh, Cooper, is he plays hard. He's, he's, he's an a, effort he's guy. A good, yeah, he's a good athlete. But he plays defense. He doesn't give you anything offensively. And what is Tom Izzo gonna do with the five star kid? What is what is he gonna do with him? I don't know. <laughs> Xavier Booker has not looked good at all. Um we talked about it before. Cohen Carr is an athlete. He's energy, but th- he has to figure out a way to channel that energy. Yeah. Like consistently. Mm-hmm. I think outside of Tyson Walker and those bright spots of Jeremy Fears. Mm-hmm. You can clear. You can clearly see there's something there with Jeremy Fears. Yeah. yeah. What else would you consider the pluses? I don't know. That's the hard part. Is like they're their veteran guys are not playing like they did last year, which is what we would have expected. I, actually, Mal- Malik Hall is giving you some production. Yeah, but he we both know he's not going to be the star. And he's still inconsistent yeah. though. That's yeah. like his biggest problem. Jaden Akins and AJ Hoggard, who had a great end of the last season that we've talked about, has they've been almost non-existent. They haven't been at effective points. at all. Yeah. Um, Tyson Walker's been really good, to be honest. All American level good. Yeah, which is disappointing because nobody else is really helping him out at the moment. And Can I ask you one question that's going to be a weekly thing for me now? <laughs> okay. Just the weekly question of what does Trey Holloman do? Oh, man. <laughs> Over <laughs> what thanks- does Trey Holloman do? Over Thanksgiving, he had a mid-range game. He hit a couple shots from the elbow. Amen. And he, he just did a little quick dribble in, pull up. Like, what? Is he gonna? Is he just going to have, like, different sprinkles of different types of games guess. every week and the other parts disappear? Yeah, I don't know. Like, he what looks Trey like Holloman do? he looks like a pretty good shooter at times, but... <laughs> He's also just kind of out there. I don't yeah. know. It's a tough one. Tum tum energy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> tum tum energy. Um, so I don't know. I, I guess the five star guys are just they're going to take longer to the, to develop than I think a lot of people thought. Maybe there's also another kid they really haven't played yet, Garrick Norman. 
the shooter from Texas. Yeah. He was like a four star guy. Yeah. I wondered if Jaden Akins doesn't pick up the shooting, did, do you throw him in there? Because that's his that's that's his profile of the guys coming into this recruiting class. Yeah. He's the shooter. I don't I just don't know if it's it, it like it that, that doesn't sound like a Tommy Zoe kind of thing. Listen. He just sticks with his guys, it feels did like. Did he just say I'm gonna play freshman just to say it? Because he said it to yeah. to all of us. Yeah. In a press conference. You're you're the, right. That was a listen. That was a news flash. If you're not getting shooting from your vets, you got to play the kid that you recruited to shoot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm hopeful, but it's just hard. I don't know. Like I've I've been so used to Tom Izzo just kind of doing his thing. So for him to even say like he was going to play the freshman and stuff was a shock at first. So uh, not sure. Um, I, I again, I still think this team is talented. I think they got a chance to make a run at some point. Um, I would just say I'm not going to expect a Big Ten title run or shot at it, really. Like, I think they could maybe get it to the, I don't know, second or third round of the tournament for the Big Ten. And then in the big dance, it maybe they they sound like a second round out, to be honest, which sucks because they could get a decent seed and lose to a higher seed. Just seems like it's going to be one of those kind of years. Um, but we'll see. It's still It's still very early. Yeah. Haven't even started conference play yet. Yeah. And also, before you get on, get on to Michigan, have you seen James Madison is still undefeated? Yeah. They're ranked 22nd. Mm-hmm. And they're just, like, walking through their schedule. Yeah. So, will that be a bad loss at the end of the season if James Madison goes, like, 29-1? and one? I don't know. It's I mean, that, who knows if they're going to do that. But And it's helping James Madison out that they beat a big-time yeah. school. So, like, James Madison's good. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Somehow they got both their football and basketball programs cooking at the same time, yeah. which is interesting. Um, and then, yeah, on, on the Michigan side, I think the last time we talked, Michigan was kind of looking pretty decent. And uh, over Thanksgiving, they, they... Well, well, before the battle for Atlantis, they lost a game to Long Beach State. Yeah, that was the big one. And I wasn't too upset afterwards. Because when you look at the shooting percentages for Long Beach State, they could barely miss. Mm-hmm. They shot like 60% from the field yeah. and almost 50% from three. Like, not Michigan's defense wasn't great, but Long Beach State also just was unstoppable. Yeah. Like, their starting two guard had almost 40. Yeah. and we, It we was know, just an up-and-down insane game. We know from, you know, past years and things like that from tournaments and stuff, like, these smaller schools love to shoot threes, and if yeah. they get you on the right night, they they can beat people. Like they they were aggressive and they just were attacking nonstop. Yeah, and their shots were falling. Right. It's a good game for Long Beach State. Mm-hmm. Now, when you get to the battle for Atlantis, yeah, you play Memphis. Surprise, surprise! Juwan is back on the bench, mm-hmm. shouting from the to now, share. He's not sitting down. He's not fully in head coach mode. He's still letting Phil Martelli take uh, control for the most part, doing something. But he's there saying things and clapping. Yeah. Yeah, yelling. And they looked terrible for most of the game against Memphis with Juwan on the bench. Yeah, getting ejected. And listen, I feel bad with him coming off a heart surgery. (laughs) Yeah. I'm happy he's healthy. I'm happy he's there for his guys. But why do they look like this as soon as he got back on the sideline? I don't don't understand. Yeah. There are just stretches where it looks like they don't know how to play together Mm -hmm. when Juwan is on the bench. Phil Martelli is coaching. They just, they understand how to play basketball, at least on offense, fluently. Just, just inconsistency and not that great against Memphis. They come back against Stanford, a bad start. They're down like twenty three to nine. They figure things out later in the game. They end up winning eighty three to seventy eight. Solid win. Mm-hmm. Very next game, absolutely awful. You lose to Texas Tech seventy three to fifty seven. Yeah. At this point, honestly, I'm just expecting another up and down season. Yeah. Like. They're showing all the signs of the the same team they were last year, where they would show signs of a high level team that could like be good in the tournament, right. or a team that shouldn't even sniff the tournament and mm-hmm. should just cut their losses for the season. Yeah, and they're showing both of those sides right now. Right. I don't know which side to fully believe in. Doug McDaniel had a great start to the season. He's kind of cooled off since then. Mm-hmm. He's still playing kind of well, but it's not the same. Uh. Some of the veteran guys, Terrence Williams has his moments, but he also has those moments where it looks like he doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah. 
it's, it's just it's it's weird to watch. It's really weird to watch, seeing that they. At times they just know what they're doing, and at other times they just completely just don't. Right. And I don't know why there's they just can't have consistency. Now, yes, there there are like transfers and old guys mixed with new guys and a lot of new stuff going on. Mm-hmm. But I, it shouldn't be this difficult to me to play decent defense and get good shots on offense. Yeah, like they make they make it look very difficult at times. Right, and it's already kind of annoying. Mm-hmm. Now, luckily, they they got a little break off in between the Texas Tech game and when they play Oregon on December second. Yeah, and I don't know if it's a tournament game. It says it's at Oregon. It says Matthew Knight Arena. Is that Oregon's arena? <laughs> I'm not even sure. Um, Matthew. Oh yeah, okay. It's it, at Oregon. Yeah, so, I was yeah. gonna say because that would be road game in Eugene. Then on the fifth, they play Indiana at home. Indiana's looking solid so far. And then they go to Iowa, who's always tough. Yeah. These next three games are going to tell a lot. I don't know what to expect. <laughs> right. It could be a win streak. It could be a losing streak. I don't know. I hope they look good. They're talented enough. They've shown they can do it. But I, I just don't know. Yeah. I do not know right now. Yeah, I feel that. It's, uh, it's tough <clears throat> early on in the season. Um, to figure out where teams are at. Um, and like, we're finding out like even that Memphis loss isn't that bad. Cause we're finding out maybe Memphis is actually pretty good. Um, they did pretty well in the battle for Atlantis. They did lose to Villanova in the championship, but they're a pretty solid team, I guess. Um, and if you look at like the top 25, it's all over the place already. Like Purdue, Arizona, they're the six and O teams with UConn. Uh, you got Houston. Those are kind of the notable teams you know, that we've seen uh, recently. But then, like, Marquette is in third right now. Um, Then you have Kansas and Duke, who we've seen play really well. Duke just lost to Arkansas. Yep. They got upset. Mm -hmm. And Kansas, they were on fire for a little bit, and then uh, they lost to to Marquette in the Maui Invitational. That's why Marquette is all the way up to third now. Um, So it's just all all over the place. Um, And then you have, like, the teams like the Cinderella's from last year, like FAU, Colorado State, who's made big improvements in their program. Um, it, it's all over the place early on in the season, yeah. to say the least. So don't fully know what's going to happen. And as we always say, the, the Big Ten in basketball, they'll eat each other alive. So it's it's oh, it's a wait and see, unfortunately. Um, All right. Let's talk about the Lions specifically before we do picks because they had a pretty bad loss. I mean, they only lost by six. Was it 29? 29-22. Okay, so it was seven. Um, So it was a touchdown. Had to go for an onside kick to get the win. It would have been even crazier of a miracle than the week prior when they beat Chicago. Um, And they just were not in control in this in this game at all from the jump. Um, the Packers went down and scored right away. Lions did answer back, but then I don't know what's happened lately, but Jared Goff is like looking like Matthew Stafford a little bit. Like, well, the Jared Goff needs time in the pocket. Yeah. To make those quick decisions and be accurate. Mm -hmm. How would you say the O line has looked in the past few weeks? They looked really bad on Thanksgiving. And I don't know what that, Cause if he was, doesn't have time, he can't play well. Yeah. The only person that was out was Jonah Jackson. Um, I know Jonah Jackson's been really good, but I, I can't imagine it being that big of a deal that he was gone because we played without specific linemen throughout the year, and the line has been solid all year round. The only thing that I'll say that, like, I, I guess I mean by Jared Goff looking like Stafford is he's, like, really pressing for certain passes. Like, he's trying to throw in some of the tightest windows. And when it looks, when he hits it, it looks amazing. It's crazy. Like some of the passes that he's thrown to Amon Ross St. Brown are insane. But the problem is if he misses, it like they turn into like pick sixes and things like that. And they're really risky throws at the same time. So that's a concern. The offensive line is a concern. The defense has backpedaled tremendously from where they were yeah. early on in the season. A that's lot of people say, problem. a lot of people say ever since they got blown out by Baltimore, 
like their defense has just not looked as good. And I don't know if that's mentality or what. Um, and now it sounds like Alex Anzalone is going to be out um, for a bit. I'm not sure exactly how much. I haven't heard the re- reports since. Um, but at least he's like the, the leader out there on the field. So now it like Bruce Irvin, who we talked about two weeks ago, might actually he get played yet. No, but okay. he might actually get play now because he's been ramping up his practice. And now with some of the injuries, he might show up. Um, can he be like the veteran leader out there? I don't expect him to do anything like physically necessarily, but maybe he can be at least the, the veteran presence out there for those guys. Yeah. I, I think it's a problem that at this point, your most exciting players on defense and your main playmakers are first and second year guys. Mm-hmm. Like Brian Branch is like your playmaker in the secondary right now. Yeah. And Kirby Joseph is still good, but he hasn't taken that next step yet. Right. You never know what you're going to get out of Jerry Jacobs. Mm-hmm. Cam he, Sutton. Jerry Jacobs was getting torched on yeah. Thanksgiving. Cam game. Sutton, he's been, what, average? Yeah. He's had some good yeah. games here and there. Like the Emmanuel Mosley signing has hurt because he got hurt again. Yeah. And obviously CJ GJ, CJ Gardner-Johnson. Yeah. His injury has been big. Mm-hmm. Which he's still expected to to come back in a hopefully a couple weeks. Hopefully, so we can make a stretch. Yeah, but also, yeah, Jack Campbell has been kind of disappointing so far. Yeah, he hasn't progressed as quickly as we thought he might. Yeah. Um, but so it's when when your defense is made up of guys this, this young mm-hmm. and the rest of the guys around them aren't, like, savvy veterans. Yeah. They're just guys that play, like, role players mm-hmm. for the most part. It's There's no way you can hold for, like, a long time. Yeah. And I think a lot of the, the frustration for Lions fans has been the whole point of not making a move at the trade deadline is that they liked the guys that they had. They felt that they were good enough. And yet, since the trade deadline, it seems like we've gotten even worse at getting pressure on the opposing quarterbacks. And Jordan Love's had a very up-and-down season this year, but at times he's looked really good. Um, but going into this game, he was kind of struggling a bit. So for him to kind of carve he us up. He made it look easy. Yeah. Like very, very easy. Yeah. Just walking down the field on the lines. Mm-hmm. We gave Christian Watson his best game of the season. Um, Jaden Reed continues to look really good for the Packers. And we just kind of like made them look good, which is, is not good, especially when they had a, a bunch of injuries themselves, especially on the defensive side. That's what I think was so frustrating is that the offensive line could not hold for anything. And then, so Jared Goff was pressured a lot and it seemed like we couldn't beat anybody downfield and that's like like they were out without Jair Alexander and a couple other people I can't remember exactly who but it's just uh just disappointing so we'll have to I don't know if they lose like I'm not gonna panic because they've they've shown that they're a good team but I do think that that knocks them down a peg to where we thought they could maybe be the number one seed I think now they're solidified behind San Francisco, behind Philly. Dallas is a wait and see. Dallas has been playing well, but I still don't think that their schedule has been anything meaningful. So it's hard to say. But um, if they lose this week, by chance, I think I go into panic mode, unfortunately. And you go back into a nervous Lions fan. And I don't want to do that. But uh, it, it might happen. Yeah, They play at New Orleans this week. Mm-hmm. New Orleans isn't very good. Yeah. They might have to go to Jameis soon. Yeah. And that's not making anybody excited either. No. And they might, you, this week, they might be without Chris Olave. Winning this game would be a big confidence booster. Yeah. A road win in a tough environment, mm-hmm. even though the team isn't what it used to be. Right. They still have some they, talent. Yeah, they they need this type of win. Yeah. And a, a scrappy win like this. Yeah. Because the Saints, I think, are still technically in play for their division. Which is insane. Because that division yeah. is just bad. Um, <laughs> yeah. So the Saints know that this is a meaningful game for them, too. So the Lions kind of need to bring it this game. And uh, it's going to be big. Um, okay, so let's get right to picks. We didn't do picks last week because Malik kind of forgot, which is no big yes. deal because we didn't do the show. Um, so we're just wiping our slate yeah. clean. I suggested we both take an L, just one L, because we both would have picked the Lions. Yeah. So, honorary L's for both of us last week. <laughs> Asterisks. Yeah. Um, so, this week, tonight, because we're doing a show on Thursday for once, uh, Seattle at Dallas. Does Seattle have any chance in this game? What is Seattle? 
Geno Smith looks not what he did last year. I think year. They, they're the one team. I still have no idea what they are. Mm-hmm. And we're this far into the season. Yeah. Like, and they're a team that the Lions lost to. That's the that's the disheartening. That, that's part. just that's that's the weird thing. For a while, people yeah. thought Seattle could be one of the top teams in the NFC, and now they've kind of just stumbled. And Geno looks very average. Um, Ken Walker's been banged up. It sounds like Zach Charbonnet is going to start uh, tonight. The Cowboys are going to do what they usually do in the regular season and most likely impress mm-hmm. and win. Yeah, yeah. The the talk isn't. I mean, the clock hasn't started ticking for them yet. Right. They still are. are they, yeah, they're living on their yearly regular season cloud. <laughs> so let them have their fun. Okay. Yeah. I'm taking Dallas. I, I can't see a way mm-hmm. Seattle does it. Um. Then we'll go to Detroit, New Orleans. I'm picking Detroit. So am I. They need it. They can't go without it. <clears throat> okay. Now this is the funniest matchup I think of the week. The two teams that we talked about preseason that we argued which team would be better and both teams stink the LA Chargers and the New England Patriots you thought the Patriots were going to turn back the clock and surprise some people I thought the Chargers was finally going to get over their their issues and win some games neither team wrong is doing wrong neither team is doing either of that you do not trust Brandon Staley Brandon Staley still has a job <laughs> yes and the Patriots are going back to Bailey Zappi Start Malik Cunningham. Yes. Just let him run. Like, Let him run around and try things. If you've paid attention to New England's quarterback thing this this year at all, they started with Malik Cunningham on the roster, put him to the practice squad, said we're starting Mac Jones. Then they benched Mac Jones at one point, played Bailey Zappi for like a game. Then Mac Jones was the starter again, and now he's been benched again, and now Malik Cunningham is back on the roster. Like, it's a mess. I don't know what they're doing, how they're going about it, but it's a mess. Um, and yeah, the the Chargers they just they can't win games. I don't know what their problem is. Give me the Patriots. Okay, I'm taking the Chargers then. This is the, the I, end I all. I want nothing more than for Brandon Staley. Did you see his his sound bites? Oh man, it was After bad. The- yeah, yeah, it was bad. I am the play caller for this defense. Yeah. That will not change, Joey. Mm-hmm. He was speaking to you directly. I hope you know that. Yeah. Well, he wanted to let you know. I don't care if he's the play caller or the defense. I don't want him play calling for the team <laughs> <laughs> at all. Yeah. Ugh. Anyway, Arizona at Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is still <laughs> hanging around. Pittsburgh is in the wild They card. fired Matt Canada, and they put up over 400 yards of offense. For the first time in multiple years. They are in the playoff wild card right now. Pittsburgh. They are right behind the Ravens in the AFC North. That's incredible. I love that. How does Mike Tomlin get away with this? Listen. It's become a joke the last couple years because they're not a good team. He may have signed some contract (laughs) or something that I want to allude to. (laughs) Some devious contract. Yeah, he might have signed something because – this is ridiculous. Steelers fans can't be happy with this. No, that this is they used to contend for Super Bowls. Yeah, this is not fun. Right. Yeah, we're winning for what? Yeah, you're. you're they gotta want yeah. draft picks at this point, especially like with this quarterback class. I don't think like Kenny Pickett has shown he's an all right quarterback. I, I just don't. He's think a backup he, for the most part. Right. And like with this upcoming quarterback draft class. Steelers fans has You've got at be, least five guys that can be better than him. Yeah. At least. Steelers fans have got to be disappointed that they might not have a chance at any of those guys. Listen, they got to trade up for something. Mm-hmm. Go get Michael Penix in the 20s or something. Yeah. Do it. I mean, maybe realistically, if Najee Harris finished out the season strong, they could trade Najee Harris for something. It's possible they got Jalen Warren. So, uh, anyway, Arizona also stinks. So, I'm picking Pittsburgh. So am I. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Arizona... Man, even with Kyler coming back, he just, I don't know. They don't have enough for their team. Um, then we have Indianapolis at Tennessee, both a uh, couple meddling teams. How's that Will Levis hype doing, Joey? Yeah, it's falling off the radar pretty bad. He looked okay last week, but uh, after that first game where he went crazy um, and threw a bunch of touchdowns to DeAndre Hopkins, they just haven't been able to move much. Um, their offensive line stinks. Um, Derrick Henry... He does well when they're ahead. He's he's great for padding their lead, but 
when they're behind in games, they just they don't have a way to come back. And uh, the Colts, they're without Jonathan Taylor. He's getting thumb surgery, so they'll they'll have Zach Moss, who's played pretty good for them. And uh, I don't know. Indianapolis is just kind of middle of the road, pretty decent. I don't know. I'm going with the Colts. Okay. Um. I think this is a game out. I'll take Tennessee. Again, I'm backs against the wall. I gotta start making some bold picks. Uh, Denver at Houston. This for some people, this could be their like favorite game of the week. Denver has won five straight now, and Houston is just they're really good. But they, I don't know, they they've lost a couple here and there. Uh, Jacksonville got them um, last week, and it just seems like. There's a lot of hype around C.J. Stroud in this offense, but I don't know. They're not winning games necessarily. So, I don't know. With all that being said, I want this Denver hype train to die out. I'm picking Houston. I'm picking the Broncos. Let's ride. Russell Wilson. Back in a little bit of a groove, Joey. Yeah. This, I'm not all in again. Mm-hmm. I'm not. Okay. But. You're getting there. But. I'm intrigued. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm intrigued. Okay. Sean Payton still has a little left. Yeah, maybe th- maybe they're figuring it out. Um, and then we go from possible game of the week to possible worst game of the week. The Atlanta Falcons taking on the New York Jets. Desmond Ritter versus Tim Boyle. What a mythical, magical surgery did uh, Aaron Rodgers do um, to be practicing so- again with no... Uh, equipment on. So funny enough, the, the thing that I'm I'm starting to agree with almost is that I've like 97.1 had said that the whole Achilles tear is just a fake, like it never happened. I'm starting to think that that was possible. That he like tweaked if the entire Achilles thing was a fake. Like maybe he tweaked. What was the point then? Before Aaron Rodgers to just look like some magic man. What well, what what was the point? To sell ayahuasca. <laughs> That's what people were saying. <laughs> this entire season is just an advertisement for ayahuasca. Yeah, it's so funny. No, that's a theory. There's a lot of like memes that I've gone down the rabbit hole to find about Aaron Rodgers and his whole thing. But Falcons. <sighs> this is another Tim Boyle special. Now he he granted us a 99 yard pick six, <laughs> and we should be thankful. Yeah, but he he shouldn't be in the NFL, Joey. Yeah, I looked into his like journey to be an NFL quarterback. He hasn't been good since high school. Yeah, he wasn't I good saw in that. college. I I saw somebody post that he was a bad college quarterback. Yeah, and the NFL gave him a chance. Yeah, just put Trevor Simeon in. At least agreed. He has less of a rep. Like, give him a little more time. Uh, I'm gonna go with the Jets for no other reason than I still want Arthur Smith fired. It's a vendetta. Yeah. I'm a fantasy football player, so. I guess that's where it, it lies, but um next we have Miami at Washington. I gotta go Miami. <laughs> I, I can't I can't trust the commander. I can't either. If they were playing the Eagles, maybe, but uh They're a know. different team every week. Yeah. And a lot of times they're just not good. Their offense is pretty good, pretty decent. Their defense is just bad. Uh Carolina at Tampa Bay. Baker Mayfield revenge game here. Bryce Young uh, is struggling. He's struggling, and I feel like he's mentally burnt out. They need to sit him for the rest of the season. Yeah. Well. For him to have a chance. And I don't know how his mental is doing with the whole David Tepper situation. (laughs) Calling out that they were trying to get C.J. Stroud, and that was a whole mess. I don't understand how that flew at at a press conference. Unbelievable. That's that's an all-time soundbite right there. Um, so you're going with Tampa Bay? Yes. All right. Carolina. I'm going with Carolina. Sometimes it feels like recently when teams fire their head coaches, they just play loose. You want to <laughs> take a second to rethink that? <laughs> nope. Okay, Panthers? Okay, We're good. We're moving all on. Right. We're moving all on. Right, that's your team. Getting past it. 49ers at the Eagles. Are the Eagles real? I was going to say good. Actually, <laughs> they're good? good. But do you believe that they're that good? No, I don't. 
They made a comeback win against the Bills. I'm taking the Niners. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to take the Eagles. I think they are legit. I do think they have more flaws than what they've shown, but I think the same thing about San Francisco. Like, I don't know. I don't see San Francisco being as dominant as maybe I once thought. Uh, Cleveland at the Rams. I'm taking Cleveland. This is a disgusting game. Do you know why I'm taking Cleveland, Malik? Do, do I want to know? Have you heard about the projected starter? For who? Cleveland? Cleveland. Dorian Thompson Robinson is in concussion protocol. What would be it's a It's not Philip Walker. So what would be a reason that, yeah, they moved this guy up their depth chart over PJ Walker. Who would be a quarterback that's out there that would make me instantly choose a team to win? I, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. So, for the Browns this week, if Dorian Thompson-Robinson does not clear concussion protocol, Joe Flacco may be their starting quarterback. <laughs> Super Bowl MVP, Joe Flacco. Uh, give me um, give me the Rams. <laughs> give me the Rams. I'm, I'm not doing this. I'm not in the mood, Joey. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> this is not the time for for games. <laughs> the only problem about the Cleveland Browns right now is that Miles Garrett is also like on the injury report, so they could be without a lot of defensive guys. So this might Joe Flacco yeah. in 2023. Or... I mean, might help Amari Cooper a little bit. Let, let Let's move on, please. <laughs> All right, Sunday Night Football. Joe can't... Flacco in a Browns jersey. It's gonna be. It's gonna be the most ugly thing. I'm... Yeah. Let's just move on. Yeah. Kansas City at Green Bay for Sunday Night Football. Kansas City. I don't think Green Bay is really good. I think they're just young and interesting. Yeah, I'm going with KC too, but I'm a little I'm a little nervous about Kansas City. They still have flaws. Yeah. They they seem very flawed though. Even though like you know Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, their defense has played really good. I don't know if they're going to be able to overcome it this year. And they might not. They've. They've always seemed to prove us wrong. I don't think they're winning the Super Bowl. Yeah. I don't know who I project to win the Super Bowl, to be honest. I don't know if anybody's fully looked like they're ready. Um, Maybe the Eagles, just because they've had some nice wins, good finishes to games. But uh, And then we have another stinker for Monday Night Football. Cincinnati at Jacksonville. But it's probably going to be better than the Minnesota-Chicago game. That game was one of the worst Monday Night Football yeah. games I've ever seen in a long time. Um, Cincinnati at Jacksonville, though, I can't pick Cincinnati. Jake Browning's just not that good. I'm going with Jacksonville. It is wild that they are 8-3. and three. Yeah, they are basically right at the top for the AFC. Yeah, I'm taking Jacksonville also. Yeah, that's yeah. why I keep thinking that the AFC is so weird. Like, Jacksonville's at the top. The Ravens are at the top, um, and the standings are just all over the place. I want to actually look at the standings really quick. I'm pretty sure Baltimore and Jacksonville were both expansion teams in, like, 1995. They came in at the same time. Yeah, something around there. And, I mean, that was what was so crazy, though, about the Ravens getting the Super Bowl in 2000. Yeah. Um, So the standings, let's do the conference. Yeah, the AFC, we got Baltimore at 9-3. Kansas City at eight and three, Jacksonville eight and three, Miami eight and three, and in fifth place, the Pittsburgh Steelers at seven and four, Cleveland Browns at seven and four, the Colts at six and five, Houston at six and five, Denver at six and five, and then we have all the former playoff teams: Buffalo, Cincinnati, Vegas, Chargers, Titans. They're all ten through fourteen, and then the Patriots are at the bottom of the AFC. Crazy. Um, the NFC, Philly, San Francisco, Detroit, Dallas, and then we have Seattle, Minnesota, Atlanta, Green Bay, Rams. Ugh. The NFC is gross. Um, so I have no idea how the playoffs are going to work out. But it's getting kind of interesting, actually. Um, all righty. That, uh, that's our Week 13 picks. Hopefully I can make up some ground because I'm going to need it. And, uh, yeah. Can you think of anything else that we missed? Uh, 
You don't want to bring them up, do you? No, we're not going to. Okay. Should we bring up a few other cool highlights in the NBA, maybe? Okay. We can do that. That Well, we are in, like, bracket play yeah. of the in-season tournament. And I don't know if it's because it's the in-season. I, I doubt it's because. There have been some really fun in-season tournament games, like close games, and teams are playing hard. Yeah. And it's pretty cool, even though I still don't care about the in-season tournament. I was going to say, I haven't watched a ton of it. I've kept up a little bit, but... Like, to me, it's wild that the Lakers are the one seed. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. Sorry. Um, so, like, it, to me, it just doesn't make sense. Um, the Lakers are the one seed. Kings are the two seed. Pelicans are three. Suns are four. And then in the East, we have the Bucks, Pacers, Celtics, and Knicks. It's just a, a wide variety because, like, I thought the Lakers were bad and then... They've uh, they've been playing pretty well. They blew out that that uh, team that will not be named um, last night, and then the Kings, Pelicans, and Suns are kind of expected to be good. And then on the East side, the Pacers they've been a kind of a surprise um, overall. So is this is this bracket just one and done? I have no idea, Joey. Okay. I know nothing about this tournament. It has to besides be besides the fact that they're playing it. It has to be because the semifinals are on the seventh, and then the championships on the ninth. So it's got to be one and done type of games. You're probably right, which will make things interesting. That's for sure. But I don't know if the seeds really matter. Like I could see the Suns beating the Lakers, Kings might beat the Pelicans. I think the Pacers have a chance against the Celtics. And then the Bucks are going to beat the Knicks. That's for sure. But I don't know. There's, I, I'm just not into the NBA right now. It's, it's I'm still in football mode also. Yeah, it, like it's not yeah. till the new year. My mind is set on football. I check scores of college basketball and NBA for the most part. Yeah. I watch more NBA highlights because the season is like fully in the swing. Right. But yeah. Yeah. I, that's kind of my uh, motto as but, well as I'll just wait. Yeah, you see stuff like Minnesota is number one in the West right now. Like, I hate to say it, but Rudy Gobert is having one of maybe his best season as a pro. He's been incredible on defense. Mm -hmm. The Orlando Magic are coming off of an eight-game win streak. Yeah. And Mo Wagner is playing a lot for that team. Yeah. Like, they have, like, 16 guards (laughs) that they've drafted in the past five years or traded for, and all of them are playing well. They're not really even playing Anthony Black, though, right? Not Jalen Suggs and Cole Anthony play really well together. Yeah. It's, it, yeah, Jonathan Isaac looks good as a 3 and D guy. It, everything is just working for them mm-hmm. all so of I, a sudden. I guess Anthony Black is still getting 18 minutes, 19 minutes a game, but he's oh. only oh, okay. only got five points. He's not doing a whole lot with it, but he's getting time. Um, Yeah, they're, they're an interesting team. Like, they're not even playing the Michigan guys. Well, I, it's hard to say because they're basically obviously. like <laughs> they're like like a pseudo Michigan team, but the newer Michigan guys, Caleb Houston and Jet Howard, haven't really gotten any play time, so that's interesting to see. But yeah, the Magic, that's weird. The Pacers, like we said, they've they've been just outscoring teams. They're uh, I think they're still averaging the highest points per game in the league. Yes, they are. By a wide margin, actually. Yeah. And then the team that will not be named will be talked about probably in the new year. We're trying to get Chris on to do a whole state of the team because it's a mess. And there's too much to go over. And we'll probably need a whole episode to figure out how we can fix this problem. Um, But we'll go from there. Um, All righty. I think that's about it. Uh, This has been Views from the Sidelines, and we'll see you guys next week. Ohio State sucks. Uh, Michigan will probably beat them again next year. And I can't believe I can say stuff like that right now. It's incredible. The Pistons suck, Joey. (laughs) They're terrible.